All right, so I've heard a little bit about this game, and I'm just going to preface it with this. So my, my game hunter, my spy, all right, Ethan. Ethan really likes clowny games, which is a really good... Uh, it's a really good mix because I, of course, like a lot of open maps. So I keep my eye on the open maps and all that crazy stuff. And then Ethan likes the closed maps. And so we, we work on finding the best games to bring to the channel, okay? So he said to me, you know I normally don't like this map, but this was amazing. And, and he said it was crazy and wacky and wild. And it might even be High Elo Legends number two because that game... Uh, between uh, who I believe was actually Yupe, but the Finnish player and Boo in High Elo Legends was insane a couple weeks back. So let me give you background on the players. Uh, Manos is a recently returning Argentinian player. And that actually reminds me, chat, please bring it up after this. There's another game. There's a 2v2 I'm going to cast today that had Manos in it, okay? Uh, Manos is around 2k1. He's within the top 100. And he used to be uh, kind of an arena-only player many years back, before the Definitive Edition. And he returns within the last year. He wasn't playing the first year of DE. And he's very talented. Very aggressive. Uh, the Argentinian scene is very, very strong. And there's so many different names that are within the top 100. Uh, he's playing as the Saracens. We'll talk about the Sibs in a sec. Correct me if I'm wrong on this, chat. And many of you might not know, but... We have Byzantines for Hent, Hent Baluku or whatever. I think this is a Vietnamese player. Again, a player who might not be as active as some of the others, but I have played him before. I believe this is a Vietnamese player who doesn't play as much, maybe not as well known, but Vietnam's the same. You've got so many good players out there. Uh, I think that Vietnam, Argentina, and probably Brazil and China are then like the strongest countries for AOE. There's just so many players. Uh, from the top down so in fact i think according to aoe nexus vietnam has the highest highest average elo uh across all of age of empires 2. and i think it's like their average elo is like 13 or 1400 which is well above average and pretty insane if you think about it oh he's turkish he's turkish interesting is he Hmm, I wonder if he's known as something else. I mean, Turkey is a relatively small country compared to the ones I just mentioned, and they actually have some strong players too. But anyways, I did my best to introduce it. I, my memory was was wrong. And when you're thinking Saracens, you're normally thinking Archers. This is a very open map. So uh, the best thing you can do for yourself is wall in your woodlines and wall in your golds. So he's, he's walling a little bit now. I could maybe see Mono's walling towards the berries. Walling towards the TC and creating a little circle. It won't look pretty, but it will get the job done. And maybe that's what he's thinking so he can go for the archers. And then Byzantines have the ability to counter archers quite easily. Byzantines have the cheaper skirms. So I I'm excited to see how this develops. We'll look at the scouting for blue. He's out and about right now looking to find monos. And then if you're looking for monos and his scouting, he's already been here. Sees the wood line, saw the berries. You could question some aspects of his scouting, to be honest. Like, normally, you'd want to confirm the opponent has made a mill or not. You might see a barracks. You might want to look for that. He's not really doing that right now, but... Wow, the scouts were just passing, though. And I think Monos will notice this. And yeah, Blue notices the hill is there. It's just kind of funny. Blue's probably so confused because he's looking for the enemy. He might assume Monos is down here now. Because he encountered that scout. It means Hentaball in Turkish? Okay. Forgive my ignorance on that. I'm sorry. I really... I, I have a solid grasp on a lot of the players in the community. But I occasionally get it wrong. But again, I'm curious on if this guy has a, another name. I like this wall a lot more than the one I suggested for Monos. Because the small walls I mentioned would work for a time. But this wall makes a lot more sense on the long term. And he'll go for a second lumber camp. And I fully am expecting him to wall more. And then go to gold. As he accidentally rang the town bell. <laughs> you see his villagers do that? That's funny. Well, he's brought his scout home. He knows he needs to get the walls down to stay protected for this strategy. And if you look over at Blue's base. Blue's just now seen the walling villager. And so in his mindset, he's got to think, punish that as soon as possible. Here come the militia. 
But the weakness of opening archers, guys, is that you're not going to have any military until that range is completed and the first archer comes out. So blue's going to gain control here. But with the way Manos has walled this, is very intelligent. That combined with the fact that blue hasn't scouted everything fully, I think is going to make it complicated for, for blue to do damage initially with the man-at-arms. Now what I like is blue will have the ability to just make a range, right? So man-at-arms... Forcing archers from the enemy and then going skirmishers would make sense. What gets tricky is, is the eco. So, if you look at the positions, as you see blue... Oh, he's going to try and run through! Oh, Monos, you did all this work. You did all this work just to get annoyed anyways. Oh, disaster. This is fine for blue. Just don't go back. Don't let him finish the barracks, my friend. Don't let him finish the barracks and he can never go archery range. Monos... Oh, geez. It was such a good start. With a few more Palisade walls, these units never get in. But the recognition from Blue. He knows the situ what the situation means. He knows that the enemy is relying on walls and not military. Oh, wait a second. Sneaky, sneaky. He walks around that way, finishes the barracks. I like it. So now he can make the archery range. Okay. Dude, what was I saying? I was talking about the eco. Oh, yeah. Two lumber camp economy is just so much more efficient. So, uh, you're, you're always hoping with the one lumber camp man-at-arms range approach that you can do early damage. And so far, so good for blue, I think. He didn't kill a vill, but I think delaying the range is helpful. So he loops around. This has been rewalled by Monos. This is like every game I've ever played against Monos ever. Full wall. He's fully walled. He's going for another range. And guys, Saracens have amazing rates of their market. So he sold his stone so we could get a lot of gold in return. He'll go archers, and we could even foresee him using the market more to maybe buy food to go up for a fast castle age. Here comes the starting scout. You're wondering why Blue sent his scout away. He's actually hoping the starting scout from Monos doesn't snipe the archer. That's a common thing. And then both players are really in need of the fletching upgrade. But for Blue, his worker efficiency last minute... Actually, it hasn't been too high, funnily enough. I thought I was looking at this expecting it to be higher, but... It's not higher, so I'm wrong. But... Manos has been walling a lot, which is kind of my point. And he doesn't have fletching yet. And now he's got to be careful this doesn't break... These units don't break in, because we have two archers. We also have a skirm, and fletching is about to complete. And Manos has just been inviting pressure. Like, come on in! Yeah, you can see my gold is over here. We've got chips and dip near the berries over there. The scout just died over there. If you like a taste of scout. Now Fletching comes in for Manos, and this is some high-pressure stuff. So Manos is going to try and do a nifty trick here. He's trying to wall this as Blue shows up with freaking villagers. Overall, if you watch a lot of high-level Age of Empires, I think you'll realize here these players are very talented. But I think you also have to acknowledge that this is pretty messy right now. And while that move from Monos was great, it, was, it did also mean that his villagers are super idle at the moment. Blue, I would not build this tower, my friend. You, <laughs> you're going to need a little bit more in the way of army support. But hold on. He commits to it. Uh, run away! It's an eighty percent. He always oh, might going away. Oh my god, you're kidding me! Wow, this is insane. Okay, this is messy, man. Blue's playing full open, which I respect. No walls whatsoever. We used to always say no walls, full balls, or no, it was like full walls, no balls is what it was. Um, walling is a lot more prevalent in our scene today, and one of the best things you can do with walls. Is if they're not pressuring you immediately, you can just counterattack them. So here comes Monos, and this is the right move for him. What does this tower even do? He actually just had to buy stone back because I think he feels the need for a tower. He's buying more stone? What? It's messy. It's very messy. Blue's just gonna mine this stone. And if you don't see the enemy army in Blue's position, you've gotta know something's up. And look, he does. See how he's sending skirms home now? He knows that something bad's about to happen. Good job to buy stone for Manos. I'm not really sure about the whole buying of so much stone. But he is Saracens after all. Let's see if Freetown Watch pays off for the Byzantine player. 
Free Town Watch certainly makes an impact here. And he's got two skirms for now. And he notices immediately. Quick little house wall to buy himself some time. Well played. Really well played. And he'll still run away, but he won't lose the bills, of course. Nom. Nom. Archer armor now for Manos. But he's got skirms. The counter unit here. However, archers still are forcing a lot of idle time. We talked about that in Manos' base earlier. Certainly, the efficiency for Blue's not looking good, as he will end up losing a Vill. And now we have the villagers still moving around for Blue, and I think he wants to tower that gold. Ein, ein. But holy moly, is this messy right now. Now, that tower will range some of that gold, and Manos doesn't have army here. He's even trying to stonewall back here. Not a fight that I would suggest taking if you're Manos, because the skirms have full armor and full fletching. So he maybe feels like he can't get away. I think he's going to end up regretting this one. He will lose his archers, and he still will lose access to some of his wood, and also to some of his gold, as he now abandons this. Really well played from Blue. I I'm more impressed with him so far, because, I mean, he's made his life difficult, right? By playing open like this, he's made his life difficult. But what I liked was the game sense to know the archers were moving around. Like, your average player would probably just not think of it in time, and then the archers arrive, and then you react. But he he's faced up against Walders enough to know that there's going to be a sneak. Pretty solid pressure here. As Manos now has to relocate to this wood line, and he's going over to this stone. Will this go to YouTube for them to see the comments, though? Maybe, hi, Max. You guys are talking about how YouTube smells. Meanwhile, you watch on YouTube as well. <laughs> He's like, yeah, 290, I smell. It still cracks me up that one person uh, genuinely thought that people on, like, Twitch streams thought that YouTubers smelled. Like, they were offended by it. It's a joke. <laughs> it's a joke. And wow, Blue's on the way to Castle Age. Impressive. Meanwhile, someone who's super self-conscious about their smell is about to go take a shower. But, okay, so we still have four four villagers. Keep in mind, there's no stone mining income for blue. Because the villagers are inside the tower right now. So he won't have the stone for a TC. But as I say that, it looks like he's clicked them back. We have another sneak army from Manos. Don't ask me how he got here. That's sneaky. And he's also added a stable because he's up against skirms, right? So he wants to make some knights. All is well and good. I just think the eco balance hasn't been so pretty as he's been using the market constantly. Manos might wait until he gets his upgrades. I feel like there's a chance that in a second, Blue will maybe pull his army and send it forward if he doesn't see any archers. And oh, okay, the skirms actually dive in here to take a peek. And Manos immediately has a plan here. He wants to trap here. Because he's going to send a scout in to deal with this. And Blue probably making a mistake, I think, diving in with the skirms. But I like the harassment. He's just not going to be happy when he sees this scout. But it will also clue him in that the opponent has a stable. So what I like about Blue's position is he recognizes that he needs something more than just skirms just in case knights come out. And he's been making archers now. Um, I'd like to see him maybe make outposts, right? Like an outpost here and here and an outpost here and here. And then just protecting the rest of your base with military would be so strong. In the end, though, all of his skirms go down. Manos did have a lot of idle time due to that. And it's just been messy play, but you'll notice that Manos is very aggressive. He's a waller boy. He likes to wall first, but that's how Saracens typically do it. And he's going to split up armies here, guys. So this is not going to be a boom game with a lot of town centers. This is going to mean aggression. So the ideal scenario here is you attack with one army and they spot you. And then the other army is unaccounted for. That's kind of what you're aiming for. Let's see how Blue reacts. Wait, Blue can see the archers going that way. I'm not sure if he actually noticed it. Doesn't look like he did. Okay. Now, you also get free town patrol with Byzantine. Shout out to the devs. They're awesome. They're amazing. They definitely don't smell. Because I people have been wanting that for a long time and they added it. Because they always got free town watch. Just makes sense. They're also going to get town patrol. Manos is trying to go knights, but he doesn't have the food eco to make a lot of knights. He's been using the market a lot here. And notably, he is off of his gold for the most part, right? This is this is all he has for gold income. 
This is Blue's point of view. He pulled away from the gold because he noticed it. And here comes the other army. And this is so well executed from Monos. The two-pronged attack. And Blue reacts to the one army, but he doesn't react to the other one. He's going to lose so much. Now, over here, he's also attacking Monos, who's scrambling up a tower. And he really can't take wood too comfortably right now. I guess he's got this. Okay. How many villagers died here? Four or five? Elite Skirm, though, is in, which could force this away. I think what Blue really needs right now is a second town center. Second town center would do wonders for him, just to protect a wood line. Now, this King of the Desert Arabia is absolutely brutal. In fact, I, I, I said yesterday, I'm sick of it at this point. We've had it for, for months and months and months. I know the players are sick of it, too, because a lot of people are playing team games instead. Like, it's punishing, man. And so it almost feels like you know, it's hard against the best of the best to ever stay fully protected regardless of where you had the town centers but look at the little runner from blue that bought him a couple free kills unfortunately for him though this got mopped up at the same time so he didn't probably wasn't looking at that didn't expect the knights to come in and there's just been a lot of running and if you look at the worker efficiency last minute it's actually so bad for both of them 60 <laughs> percent for both of them and blue is banking up stone to maybe make a castle here now, this TC was the perfect town center because it gives him a wood line and it also gives him a gold. So, yes, it doesn't look pretty, but if he has a mix of skirm and crossbow and has his wood and gold, he's going to be completely fine to deal with this army and with these two knights. But Mono is now making more army and focused on the front. Took him a while to take care of it. He does take care of it. He'll send in another wave soon. But what he still doesn't know is that there's villagers there mining his stone might see a monk here in just a second monastery's up that would help against any knights the tc should finish off the knights but still so many skirms went down there great job from monos these are top 100 players i haven't checked blue zelo to be honest but i if i recall he's close to it if monos selling quite a bit of stone here so we can just field military and that's really what this game has been about it's been all in from him lots of aggression Okay. Alejandro, I, I've actually been using the Facebook app instead of the Facebook gaming app these days. They they pushed an update to the gaming app, and I, I still really like it. Uh, but the Facebook app is easier for me to interact when I when I go to streams. But I, it might not be the case for you. I don't know. Thanks for showing up, though, buddy. About to see a castle dropped here for Blue. I think. Could be defensive. He's on two town centers, right? He will catch up with villagers despite losing quite a few in this game. In fact, he's lost a lot of army as well. But his army composition is fairly strong. I think next you might want to get ballistics too. Oh, there's two monks here. And he will get one conversion. That's helpful. And then Manos thinks, okay, I've got him on that side. But let's maybe go to the other side. But he doesn't know about this TC. And he's kind of just let Blue know that he's over here. Oh, Monk. Okay, that, that poor old man goes down. And this is an area that's still very unprotected. Mono's looking for damage. No ballistics, FYI, for either player. We do have a second TC for Mono's. He's also adding this. So he wants to go for ballistics. Okay. Now, it's easy to just look at the armies and be impressed by that. But again, they're adding eco. So two TCs, repositioning some of this, getting a few upgrades here as monos. And we have ourselves a really close game. But again, blue can drop a castle. Do you drop it defensively or offensively here? I How epic would it be if he dropped a castle here, man? Oh, man, right here. Oh, it's perfect. Right between the golds. And he can see the TCs going up too. So maybe he holds on to that stone. Here come Crossbow, Skirm, Monk. Feels very difficult to engage against this right now if you're Monos. If the Monks aren't in there, it's a little... Actually, you know what? He's got a lot of army. I take it back. He'll have Ballistics. He's got a few Knights, which will tank some Skirm fire. The, the toughest thing to kill here is going to be the Crossbows. But he does have full armor on the Skirms, and the start to the fight was disastrous for Monos. This is what happens when you look back at your Eco, guys. Look back at your eco for a second. 
just to add a farm or fix some idle villagers, and then suddenly you take a, a fight that ends up being better for the opponent. Right, here we have a siege workshop for Monos. 91 pop versus 84. There's the castle for blue. He's protecting his gold, so there's our answer. And with ballistics, he might be thinking about pushing forward. But with Byzantines, he also might be thinking about going imp. It is cheaper for Byzantines to go imp. And since they're both relying on mainly ranged armies, it would make sense to do that for upgrades there. It looks like Mono spotted this a second ago. There is only three villagers now, so it has been spotted. And yep, Blue can see that Red's coming over here. Look at how much vision Byzantines have. And wow, he quick walls around it. He will probably just garrison in the tower now. And he'll probably send his army forward. Yep, here comes his army. So the villagers are, are have done a lot this game. They've stolen some stone. But also, they're now allowing Blue to push forward for the first time in a long time. And Mono still had his gather point set forward because he was planning on being aggressive. Sometimes easy to forget about that, as the villagers will likely go down. 60 villagers for 72. Monos is on three TCs. And I think Monos is thinking about going imp as well. The problem now is those knights are pretty ineffective because the knights don't have full upgrades. So the mix of crossbow and skirm, Monos now needs siege. And guys, he's got the siege, but he made the siege workshop offensively. So a few misplays here from Monos, I think, with positioning. Dude, Rando, I'm so happy. So happy that I'm not sick anymore. My goodness. It's still going to take me a bit to get back into my groove. But as I said to you guys, like, it's been one thing after the other the last few months. And obviously, a lot of changes with, with life, with a move recently. And then also uh, switching platforms. And so it's just one thing after the other. And then I got COVID as well. And I was just like, oh, my God. Like, I just want to I, I want to be in a groove and stay in a groove for once, you know? Oh, boy. The siege is rolling over here, though. That's one thing that we don't see from Blue. And that Manganel shot was massive. And while Imp is coming in for one player, Imp could come in for the next player. And Mono's pushes right back. He kills a few units. Now this army, I think, for blue needs to get out of here. He needs to head home. I like the third town center. I like that a lot. But what blue is hoping for is that having Bracer and Chemistry, Arbalest, all those upgrades in a little faster is going to make the difference. I do have some economic concerns for him, though. He is down in villagers. He's also not ahead in military. So he could, of course, get the upgrades first. But he's not ahead in military. Having 25 on food versus 14 is a pretty big difference here. That's the difference between getting Bracer and Arbalest and Chemistry and maybe just getting two out of those three. It's kind of funny to see Blue feel the need to use a market for food. Look at this. He's buying food, but because the Saracen player has done that so much, it's now 196 gold to buy 100 food. And you don't think about that usually. You just think, okay, this is the time for me to buy. Let's buy. You don't sit there and you don't look at the prices in Blue's position. Thumb ring now, which is something I don't think we've seen from Monos. Suddenly, this siege workshop is making a lot more sense. Also, we should point out that Monos sold most of his stone this game. And this stone has pretty much been mined through, so I don't think we'll see any castles for him this game. Also, Manganels are quite weak once imp upgrades come in for these ranged units. I'd like to see Blue set his gather point on the ranges. Looks like he's done that. And he hits imp. And now he's getting Bracer and correct move from Monos. Just back away. Don't let him trap you with upgrades. And just wait for your own upgrades. Getting Coven sounds very Florida. I mean, I don't know, man. I, I don't pay attention to the numbers nowadays. All I know is, is cases are crazy everywhere right now. I think it's easy to say Florida man, Florida this, Florida that, because it's Florida. Everyone who's not from Florida does that regardless of if there's a pandemic or not. But uh, considering I left my house once, it sucked. <laughs> so bracers in chemistry should come in like i i mentioned that he would lack upgrades right so all the upgrades are coming in for monos his units will be stronger and we have five four five no four relics excuse me for blue as he's bringing them in right now also skirms are very cheap for byzantine so you could continue to rely on that but these skirmishers are so weak from that earlier shot. 
So I think Blue needs to sense, like, in some ways he needs to do damage, but I also think he needs to sense that this straight up engagement is not what he needs right now. That said, neither player has chemistry at the moment. Chemistry will complete in about five seconds. The siege goes down. It's a pretty close battle, but this is the battle I believe that Manos will win. He's distracting with the Knights. Even if the Knights go down, that's better than losing the Arbs. As chemistry comes in for blue, Manos takes the lead, and a pretty big lead. He now has the military lead. He also has the economy lead. I'd say the only position that Manos could struggle in would be defensive castles. And then also, of course, there's relics. And so now it comes down to, can Manos get enough food eco to push back Skirm, right? So what you want to do here is you obviously continue to push all three free kills. Massive. You want to continue to push. But you need to sense the fact that the Byzantine player will spend a lot of resources on skirms. And you need to have a counter to skirm. Which, in my opinion, would be Light Cav. Um, he doesn't quite have enough food. Yeah, it's important that when this happens, this blue has all five relics and is dropping another castle. He's not going to give up anytime soon. Yeah, it's really important, I think, that uh, you keep the gather point set in your ranges and then you're patient here. You're blue. Also, start to farm. You have to fix that problem. He's also getting the final armor upgrade, finally. Decent numbers within these ranges, but... He's gonna have to get more ranges out, I think. Also, I'd kind of like to see him get block printing. So his monks have 12 range. A few conversions would definitely be helpful. Manos has control, so Manos is thinking, let's hit different positions. And he tried to loop around, but... Remember, there's a castle there. Now he's going to fall back a little bit. And this is where he needs to farm like a madman. Now he's getting chain barding. This is the correct play from him. He's now buying food, which he spent a lot of the game selling. But it's Saracens, man. Market rates are pretty darn good. There we go from Blue. Now what Blue can do here, a lot of you are probably going to think, go oh, help. He doesn't have the eco for that. But what he does have is full upgrades on archers. And so he can continue to make arbs. Do you want to go a mix of skirmishers and also arbalists? A mix of skirms and arbs is better against straight arbs. And it's better than going full skirm against them if they mix in the light cap. So this is very important. I think a lot of lower edel players are going to think as we have... Wait a second. Is this player... Shoot, what's his name? Do you see this outpost and this house thing? I think this is, um, I think this, you said it's a Turkish player, right? I think this player is a player we just casted the other day. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? The Turkish legend. The guy's been around a long time and he always does the house outpost. And unfortunately, his name is, is not coming to my brain right now, but I'll think of it. And he did play in WWC. But yeah, anyways, he does that because he wants vision, but also he when it's a habit of his because people will patrol into the outpost and then also hit the house. No, it's not Cyclops. That's a good... It's not Cyclops. It's not Kaz, but there's another one. They're both... Those are both Turkish players. There's another Turkish player. It's not those two. Um, but forgive me. His name has slipped my mind. If you watched my WWC cast, we talked about it. Um, and now that's going to bother me. But now we see Pikes, Okay. Now we see pikes. But what I was going to say is, I don't like the pike transition until you have a lot more population on the field. But obviously, getting some cheap pikemen out will be good. God, what's his name? What's his name? I'm going to have to look, man. This is bothering me so much. Good little raid here. But I think Manos is allowing this to happen because he knows he's going to have Hussar soon. And he could just send one or two Hussar over there and deal with that entire army. No, it's not Aaron either. Go bother Dave on Discord. Dude, Dave didn't even know it was a thing. I don't think Dave will remember. I, I should know the guy's name. I feel really bad. But he played in the 2v2 World Cup as well, and that's when I originally had spoken to him about it. He's a classic Turkish player. So I think that the reason I didn't know this guy fully is because he's known as something else. It's also not Yasin. But, wow, the Skirms are going to get good value for the time being. Here come the Hussars with full armor. And all Manos is doing is using this as a little meat shield right now. I would engage. Yeah, engage. Hussars are really strong against Arbs, too. The thing is, there's so much military for blue. 
and he has all five relics. And he's making another castle, so it's really hard for Manos to finish him off. Yeah, I was casting with Dave. That's true. Nah, I wasn't used to him. Actually, I, I almost prefer you guys don't tell me right now. Because I want to see if I can remember. I remember everything about his games, and... He's the only player that does that, so it's got to be a secondary account for him. Power of the Byzantines. Nope, not Cyborg. This just goes to tell you there's a lot of good Turkish players. <laughs> Power of the Byzantines here. As we have Blue taking control of more stone. Keep in mind, he's got three castles in the middle here. And he's taking this fight. He's about to get help. Overall, the value on the fights is a lot better for Mono. But I worry for him long term simply because it's really hard to kill Byzantines. And he doesn't have any relics. No, it's not El Matador. El Matador is actually a German player. It's not Air Tug. Nope. It's not Fish. That's a Vietnamese player. <laughs> The people who are totally not invested into this are just ready for us to figure out who it is at this point. <laughs> Anywho, I love the army production from our blue player as he adds more ranges. And I think the key was having the arbs. And now the halves are looking a little bit better as he's got 46 on food. And we see a castle finally for Mono. So he's thinking he needs to get some siege out here. Ubetnir! Thank you. It's Ubetnir. It's Ubetnir. That's it, Diego. It's Ubetnir. Yeah, I think this guy, if this guy's around 2k1 rated, it's most likely an Ubetnir smurf. Yeah, Ubetnir, I think, is uh, like mid-30s and has played this game for quite a bit. And he does play ranked a lot. That's who it is. Unless there's some other guy who does the exact same thing, which is so freaking specific and is also from Turkey. Maybe they share strats. Well, the arbs... Uh, with Saracens, they do melt buildings pretty quick. With Byzantines, unfortunately for him, takes longer. But there was an outpost here for Manos, and he sees the majority of the map right now. So he wants to stop this from happening. And we have the villagers desperately repairing. <laughs> That's amazing. But no, the villagers will go down in the end as Blue has been given time to get some army over here. 70 on food now for Manos. But he hasn't been raiding at all, you know? Hasn't been raiding. Not easy to raid if he eventually gets there. Now, there's not a ton of wood long-term for blue back here, but something to think about. I do really like the combination of Hussar and Arbalest. You see the Hussars are tanking so much. They only cost food here as well. And if you mix in the Halb, the Halb dies to the Arbs when they go in against the Hussar. So, Arbalest, Hussar is just the better composition. But blue's not going to give him time, and blue saves his Treb, and he's here with another one. And it looks like he's sending all of his units right here. He's also dropping another castle. There's still more stone for him to collect so he can get more castles. He's actually getting armor himself. So he... I mean, it'll take time. He needs three armor upgrades yet. But he might go for Cav. And Manos is still thinking, I need to raid. I need to do damage. I need to do something. But he's kind of handcuffed by the fact that Blue continues to pressure him in the middle. Still selling resources. He's got 3k gold in the bank. But Blue has learned the lessons of his fellow uh, friends out there. And he is not trickle trapped here. He's got plenty of trebs. I just love how Blue recognized that he would probably lose the army and lose the vills there. But he used the time to make more army and push a crucial position in the center. And that castle's down now for Mono. How often do you see a player with 3k gold in the bank but no castles? It's because he sold his stone. I'm liking Blue's position more and more now. His eco is looking solid. He'll happily throw away some skirms against the gold units. You just kind of have to wait at this point until the Saracen player is out of gold. I'm not even sure the Trebs need to come in here. This might be a slight overextension. Keep those Trebs at home. He's getting guilds now so he can sell and get more in return, which is funny. I'm not sure if I would ever prioritize that, but it's not necessarily bad. Remember, he's got good vision down here in the south as well, so he'll know if anything happens there. He hasn't quite looked over here, but he might make a house post again. It's interesting to me that Blue wants to switch into Cav. I'm not really sure that, there's, that that would make sense here. But then again... It's working quite well for Manos, so maybe it's giving him the idea that it will make sense. 
Monos has three bomb mark cannons. He's got more in Q. And Blue desperate to keep this position. But having to take out four 7,000 HP castles is absolutely ridiculous. And that's what the, that's the task for Monos right now. Blue queuing up more halves, queuing up more skirms. Byzantine trash, man. Taking more stone as well. I think Monos really should have taken this one. If you look at his vision, he's got good scouting. Really could be taking that. But man, is he mopping up units right now. Limited gold. He does not have a lot of gold. Limited opportunities to raid right now. But if he takes out this castle as he loses a bomber cannon, maybe there's a chance. Blue is, is using his trebs right now and his skirms to just snipe the bomber cannons one by one. He's being such a pest. And he's getting them too. He's getting them. Uh, quite a few bomber cannons have gone down over the last few minutes. He's also giving him time to get cab armor, which I guess will be for light cab, maybe. He had stables before. As he drops another castle! Can you imagine being Mono? 75 farms! He's got so many hustars in queue, but there's just castles everywhere. Oh my word. And, and still, Blue will continue to try and repair this. As he's buying stone right now to continue to do this. There's still more bomber cannons in queue for Monos. This continues, my friends. Yeah, this only continues. I love how he's using the Trebs to try and get lucky shots on the bomber cannons. And he just got another one. Trebs have more range than bomber cannons. So the bomber cannons would have to get in too close to the castle for comfort. This is a ridiculous game. Monos can still win this. That's the thing. It seems like such a daunting task. But with the Hussar spam, it's working so well. All the Halbs get chewed up if they go to defend. Blue maybe has had too much on stone. Too little on wood, possibly. As I think the castle... No! Bomber Cannon down! No way! Bomber Cannon down! If he gets the next one, Monos is going to tilt and resign. Okay, he's got to click it, Blue. You've got to click. Um, of course this castle's great. It allows Blue to make cataphracts. Take some wood, maybe, which he needs. Still repairing. Selling food now. Don't tell me he's going to go elite cataphracts. I think cataphracts is a throw here. Maybe I'm wrong, though. I'd love for it to work. Two bombard cannons. Just one bomber cannon now. He's still repairing. He's getting elite cataphracts here. But the Hussars, guys. The Hussars make it in. There's a big group of them now. And oh, no way! Oh my god. Okay, so the Bomber Cannon goes down to the Trebs before the Trebs go down. But it's 66 military against 15. Here go the Cataphracts. Mono sees this. And Mono makes a house there. So he actually protects himself from that. And I just don't see what Cataphract changes. And, I mean, you've got the castles, I suppose. Logistica? We're talking about some of the most expensive upgrades in the game. Logistica and Elite Cataphract. As finally, this castle will fall. Finally. But holy crap, what's happening? I mean, he does have golds. And also, there's no gold for Monos. So I suppose it is possible for Blue, who still has a decent food and gold income, to make like 50 Katas and then just kill everything. But my issue is... I don't know if Cataphracts are, are strong enough if the raids start coming in. That's what Monos needs to do. He needs to force the Cataphracts to come home. Get raids in. But you know, now that I say that though, it's kind of difficult to raid a player who's got these castles. So you kind of need to shift your focus to defending from the Katas. And Logistica gives your Cataphracts trample damage. So when they get into a fight, there's a little bit of trample, which means they do like some area effect damage. You know, I take it back. He maybe has the time to be patient here and make enough cataphracts. Now, cataphracts do struggle with pierce armor, so they're not so good against arbs. But apart from that, if the arbs aren't in the picture, they will take care of hussars. They will take care of skirms. The Saracens don't get halb, so... This is an incredible game of Age of Empires. With the main concern, again, being the fact that there's so many castles for blue. If the castles weren't there, Manos would have won this game with a raid. I still think he needs to raid. I really think he needs to send groups of Hussars into the back and try and get there. Because at the very least, what that does is it forces reactions. But holy cow. And I can't wait to see the stone collected at the end of this. 
Manos is 93. There's still stone here. He's got 93 on food. He's just gonna queue Hussars. Still 70 military. Blue blue cataphracts are just too expensive for you, dude. He's got 10 cataphracts. 10 cataphracts is not enough. Villager's dying there. Mono's, again, making Bomber Cannons. He's had to sell his food. That's one way to do it, though. Sell food so you can get the gold. And he, he will probably lose another Bomber Cannon, which is a little sloppy, but he's still got two firing here. There's no way Blue keeps his castle up if this continues. And notice he's shifting into skirms. He's shifting into into uh, into the halves. And guys, this is actually... I mean, there's plenty of examples where trash units are king. But this is actually the weakness of the Byzantines. If they play too heavy into trash, combination of Hussar and Arbalest is actually better. Though, of course, Red has had the numbers. Mobility is a little bit of an issue as well. The Cataphracts did change that. Still gold over here to be taken by someone. Let's see, though, if the numbers even out a little bit if I'm wrong on that. Because Blue has queued up quite a few units here. And he's still got so much stone. I can't believe we're an hour and 10 minutes in and he's still mining stone in two places. How much? Okay, so he's getting 19 gold in return for selling resources right now. And now he's selling wood. What's funny about that is the wood return price is pretty good because he bought wood earlier on in the game. There's still stone here. <laughs> What's happening? And wait. Did Manos call it? Wait, wait, what? I was not expecting that. I think Monos might have just called it. I was just about to say that Monos is going to get pushed back again. He's going to lose his Bombard Cannons. The castle stays up for blue. He still has the Relics. He had more trash units on the way. Cataphracts were about to do damage here, so he'd killed maybe like 10 to 15 fills. Monos would dip down to 100 fills. Still wouldn't be able to push the castles. And then still would have some cataphracts running around. Wow. Very rarely do you see someone resign at 180 population. But I feel like Manos just felt it was inevitable from here. How many bomber cannons did Manos make in this game? I'm surprised it doesn't say his most created unit was a bomber cannon. A disconnect maybe? Maybe. Because typically you'd see a GG. I could see this being a disconnect as well. But if we analyze the situation... Who do you guys think wins this game if this game plays out a bit longer? I... Uh, I think that Blue wins this game, actually. Now that I, I assess the situation, I know I just said all this stuff, and it makes me seem really hypocritical about trash units. A player with five castles, or excuse me, four castles, five relics, and... Byzantine trash with a few cataphracts is probably going to be a whole lot better than a baby, uh, a player who needs to babysit his 16 arbs. Goodness, that was insane. And also, to make it even more insane, if you didn't have an idea already that players have to do a lot, there is the timeline. The new and improved timeline, where it shows uh, the lighter colors, which shows their eco, the darker colors, their military, and then it shows all the technologies. Holy crap. That's overwhelming, though. Okay, we'll remove some of that. You don't need some of that stuff. I think just to, to break it down, like, you look at this, the, um, the key here was first off the relics, and you can see the economy tab. The economy tab will show the relic gold, 4,400 gold. But it was staying alive, guys. It was staying alive. Blue fell into a lot of spots where he was down in military. And you can see that with the... Sorry, still getting used to this. You can see that here. He's behind in military. Uh, you can also see that through various stages in early imp, he was behind in military and behind in technology. And I think that his castles ended up saving it for him, but he was also very, very patient with where he placed those castles and where he took fights. Yep, yeah, Mono's researched heavy camels. You could kind of compare it to blue research and cataphract and then kind of running out of gold to make stuff. He probably thought, how do I kill the cataphracts? Uh, unfortunately, I don't think camels would have worked, but look at that. Bomber cannons cost 225 gold and 225 wood a pop. I think it's fair to say that Mono's lost at least 10, right? So with that said, 10 times 225, you're looking at the gold differences and it doesn't really feel like Mono's had that much more gold. 
And I, I think a mistake from Manos, granted it would have been tough, is the raids. I really would have liked to see him try and raid more. Because what I was thinking was, Blue actually had some weaknesses with his farming eco back here. The castles were all kind of central for a while. Like, this is all exposed, right? This is exposed. Um, and then this is still exposed. So I think Hussars could have run around. Um, but still, I mean, that's just still an amazing game of Age of Empires. I think it was winnable for both all the way up towards Imp. And we got to see different strategies. And also, how often do you see Saracens versus Byzantines? There's the KD for you. Manos loses the game, and he's probably like, what? Byzantines are OP? Holy freaking crap. Yeah, probably should have raided a bit more. And maybe shouldn't have sold so much stone. Half the, half the reason that the Saracen player gets ahead in games is because they sell their res. It's become a very common thing in our meta for players to sell their stone and then buy food. Or just sell their stone for gold. And so you do that, and then you're going to have some big issues in the long term because you don't have protection. GG.